какой у нас пятый, четвертый канал? Я не знаю, спроси. Какой пятый, четвертый? Так, доброе утро. Good morning. Good morning, every, everyone. Good morning. Uh, we have today an, an interesting day, and I hope that it will be uh, intellectually important for us, and we'll like it. And since we'll like it intellectually, so we'll like it uh, uh, to uh, to go through it because we won't get tired. And uh, I wanted to uh, not so much introduce you uh, to uh, uh, Mr. Goodcomb because you know him, but I'd like to tell you that he heads the. Uh, it's, I can't. I can't say that. It's not very polite to say that. But uh, so that anyone who is. Uh, uh, who seriously is studying uh, sociology, politology, uh, public opinion, and uh, and economics, uh, and uh, so those. Uh, and, uh, so then, 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 uh, then uh, this interpretation of Levada Center, um, and not only in Moscow but in other uh, cities. Uh, and I think that the main point is that uh, it's not so much how you see the fact from which angle. Yeah, because one fact added to another fact uh, so only just uh, increases the number of facts but what is important is to uh, to learn and to know how to interpret uh, the the background and uh, how to interpret the history how to interpret the principles uh, and uh, and so mr mr levada uh, uh, who was our expert so he knew how to do it so until until the last days of his life so he uh, was our expert, and Leo Dmitrievich Gudkov, who uh, uh, do not uh, just he uh, he follows uh, this this interpretation and and this the main ideas, the main happenings, the main occurrences in Russia, and uh, so he so he continues uh, to walk in, in in the steps of of his predecessor, and uh, he is a worthy uh, uh, legacy in the in the center. Uh, uh, so where he works uh, is what uh, Mr. Levada put into it, and uh, and uh, Mr. Mr. Gudkov. And uh, so today is uh, the birthday of Mr. Levada. So he uh, he would have turned uh, uh, he would have uh, he would have uh, turned 84 years old, and uh, so he uh, he is not with us. Uh, he hasn't been with us for several years already, and. Uh, and, and uh, I don't think that we should dedicate uh, today's uh, uh, presentation uh, to Mr. Levadov. Uh, and uh, uh, certainly he would be, he wouldn't be very happy if we dedicated to him. But and, uh, but uh, uh, Leo Dmitrich, I remember uh, uh, his uh, his quote from Seneca: "Today is uh, yield is bad, but we have to sow anyway." Because so even if uh, the weather is bad, and, uh, so we need to sow. Uh, even if you take in a bad yield, so you have to sow. You have to cultivate. And I remember uh, uh, Lev was telling me when in the 70s, uh, all the intellectuals were complaining of the Soviet power, Soviet life that was humiliating, horrible, disgusting for the spiritual development of a person. And uh, so many tried to leave the country. Some uh, uh, managed to leave. Some uh, were banned to leave. And, uh, and they left Alexandrovich. And someone was saying, uh, "You know, my 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 soul is on the verge." Uh, so how do you put it? How he put it? I don't remember. So my soul is on the verge uh, of I can. So it means that your soul is small. If your if your soul cannot hold it, if your soul cannot stick it, then your soul is too small. That's what he said. So we have to stick it, and we have to continue fighting. <coughs> uh, good good morning. Uh, what, uh, what I wanted to present to you is, is our 
uh, our information, our research, our studies uh, uh, concerning the, our polls, public opinion, and the main uh, and the main uh, uh, focus. What I wanted to concentrate on is uh, is uh, is the rise of Russian nationalism, uh, so that we have been witnessing recently. And uh, uh, so this event, uh, this phenomenon is quite interesting by itself, in itself. And uh, I'm not even just to talk about the most recent event in, in Ukraine. So it's, it's, it's very telling, uh, because this rise, uh, rise of Russian nationalism started much earlier. And the main cause, uh, 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 causes of uh, the rise of the Russian nationalism uh, are quite convoluted. So let's try to figure it out. So if you if you look at this uh, chart uh, um, about the, the situation in, in the country uh, so that we've been uh, uh, reporting uh, in the last 20, 20 years uh, so we can uh, easily easily see so in the 90s uh, so was this down spike a negative spike because of the transformation of uh, transformation crisis uh, the collapse uh, of, 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 of the uh, living standards uh, so very deep uh, deep deep crisis of, uh, uh, so the people uh, were lost confused frustrated uh, so lost of hope uh, loss of hopes uh, and and then uh, so there was a very uh, indicative uh, uh, salient uh, uh, rise uh, so with the advent of putin uh, with authoritarian uh, uh, so hoping for the savior, for one strongman leadership, and uh, so then uh, so there is the leader uh, who who will take the country out of uh, chaos of, uh, and, and and crisis, and then uh, so then there were certain fluctuations. Uh, so there was this uh, growth of positive evaluation, and uh, reached the peak uh, in August September, two thousand eight, uh, during the. Uh, during the Russia-Georgian War, mm -hmm. and uh, so that's when, for the first time, we noticed uh, we, the maximum rise, uh, the, the uh, spike of nationalistic nationalistic feelings. So the crisis uh, had not yet struck at that time, and uh, the people's incomes uh, were rising uh, six, seven percent a year. And uh, in spite of the fact there was this authoritarian uh, regime in the country, so even even uh, even the small uh, part of uh, liberal uh, uh, pro-Western uh, 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 groups, uh, so they were ready to support uh, uh, the, the the existing the existing st uh, status quo and the system of rule. But then uh, uh, then the crisis struck, and then the decline. Uh, uh, started to uh, to develop more and more precipitously, and, and all the way down to January this year. And, uh, mm. So then the events around Ukraine, mm. and, uh, so this uh, gave very sharp rise. Uh, uh, in spite of the fact that the economic prospects uh, and the evaluations, uh, so they are quite bleak uh, and, uh, and pessimistic. Uh, Mm. And uh, 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 so, uh, the pe people are apprehensive and uh, and concerned, uh, but still, uh, uh, so the uh, uh, so this curve is on the rise, uh, and uh, so people's feelings, people's tonus, uh, uh, started to uh, go up. So th this is the March uh, information, the most recent information. And I think that this uh, this this will continue because the people's feelings and uh, uh, will continue to rise. Mm. Uh, then, uh, if you mm, so the national tension, uh, so the, this uh, this feeling of uh, that something is wrong in this area. So the ethnical uh, 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 disturbances, uh, uh, in the ethnical unhappiness. Uh, uh, so we we we, we know xenophobia, the growth of xeno xenophobia. Uh, so we. Uh, uh, we started to notice that, uh, so the ethnic tension, uh, uh, we, st uh, we, we noticed that too, and it's on the rise. So, so both the subjective uh, perception, and uh, so it was proven by the statistical data of, uh, uh, concerning the, uh, uh, the ethnic conflicts. 
uh, conflicts uh, so last year. So the media uh, uh, spoke about uh, very little uh, ethnic, uh, inter-ethnic con conflicts, uh, but there were more than 360 uh, inter-ethnic conflicts. Uh, uh, um, uh, uh, so pu public uh, hostilities, discontent, uh, 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 violence. Uh, so, uh, so even uh, the result in violence and bloodshed. So, 360 uh, last last year. Uh, as you see in October 13, 2013, if we if we put together so the pink and uh, the brown uh, columns. Uh, uh, so we can uh, say that uh, here is the, we can see the maximum, uh, the spike of uh, inter-ethnic uh, tension. At the same time, what about the expectations, uh, so all the clashes, uh, so the expectations out of possible clashes uh, on the basis of inter-ethnic strife. Uh, uh, so they reached the peak as well, the pinnacle. Uh, and uh, so, and there are no, uh, on the face of it, there are no reasons for conflict, no grounds for conflict. Uh, uh, so, and then Russia is for Russians. Uh, so these feelings are running high now. So this is a Russian slogan: Russia is for the Russians. And, uh, you know, and so, 66 percent uh, uh, of the population uh, share this feeling. Then anti-Caucasian, uh, uh, the co people living in the Caucasus feelings uh, are running high too. Uh, so you can, do you have enough time to, to see what's on the slide? And then the general uh, uh, so negativism uh, concerning the uh, immigrants. Uh, so from the southern republics, not only from the Caucasus, uh, from Moldavia, uh, and uh, from uh, other immigrants, uh, immigrants, Gostarbaitis from the Middle Asia. Uh, uh, so then uh, Mm. Although this uh, animosity, uh, uh, direct animosity, direct manifestations of animosity uh, is not uh, pronounced, uh, so we don't see it every, every day, and, uh, uh, so both internally and externally, but, uh, but there is a feeling that uh, 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 so this uh, uh, diffused, uh, uh, pent-up uh, aggression uh, is felt. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, so which people cannot cannot channel their feelings, cannot figure out their feelings, understand what. what but this uh, pent up uh, aggression is is there. Uh, uh, then uh, what what are the reasons? First, let's try to try to see uh, to delve into it <coughs> on a greater, uh, more minute details. And, uh, so this ethnic uh, ethnic tensions. Uh, or national national tension, national aggression. Uh, so, what what could be the cause of it? Uh, uh, it's not only uh, manifested uh, in the xeno xenophobic uh, 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 pr pronouncement, but it seems so negative feelings against the West uh, 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 grew. So, anti North America feelings uh, are running high as well. Anti European uh, so feelings uh, have grown very considerably as well anti-European and anti-American. What's the, what's the reason, what's the cause of this change, of this mass, mass feelings? Um, uh, why is that? Uh, uh, so it goes hand in hand with the growth of general social uncertainty and social kind of vexation. Uh, so the first uh, uh, thing that I would like to posit, uh, so I'd like to uh, offer to your opinion, uh, is that the growth of nationalism and xenophobia is the flip side of the disappearance of politics. So the, uh, the growth of repressions uh, of the regime that the regime displays, uh, so the growth of repression, and the reduction of the field of public discussion uh, to come out with their, their opinions and discuss freely. Uh, so these two things uh, give this uh, uh, sharp uh, uh, sharp uh, 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 you know, uh, appearance of this uh, murky, uncertain, uh, diffused uh, in indignation and uh, and hate, uh, so because it cannot be properly articulated, cannot be properly channeled, and uh, and that certainly turns into this uh, people trying to prove themselves and uh, and want just to find an enemy. Uh, and uh, uh, so the slide uh, uh, says that are there any enemies? Uh, does does Russia have any enemies? That's the question. 
so it, it grew, not today. Uh, so this feeling that uh, Russia is surrounded by enemies, but uh, the, so in, the two, in the year of 2000, when Putin came to power, and with the general policy of Russia, uh, reoriented itself, readjusted itself uh, with the relationship with Russia and Europe. So uh, it started from the slogan of, uh, so uh, Europe is our common house, uh, and we need to integrate into Europe. That's how it started. So we need just to merge into the world process, and Russia should become part and parcel of the total civilization process. Uh, starting from uh, the year of 2000 and late, so we can see the slow reorientation uh, 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 to the internal domestic uh, problems. Uh, uh, then ideology of traditionalism uh, was uh, getting strong. And uh, so the idea that the idea it was instilled that the West is our enemy and uh, to follow in the main trend uh, of Europe, we should not do that. And we should orient and look at our uh, domestic values, uh, go back to the roots, national traditions. And all this went hand in hand uh, with the feeling of uh, the animosity of the surrounding world, uh, of the world around us. and uh, and. Um, and uh, so then suspicion, uh, general suspicion concerning vis-a-vis -vis West, uh, so to European values. Uh, so this is a very important salient point and a very telling point mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, because it's, uh, uh, it's related with the rejection uh, 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 to, to go institu to do institutional reforms, uh, uh, domestic reforms, and the, and the strife uh, of the authorities to, uh, to immobilize the situation, to ossify the situation. So change replaced by stability, and, uh, so tend to, uh, to conserve uh, uh, and uh, to, uh, so those who have already acquired power just to retain power. That was the main idea. And then certainly the strengthening of isolationism, and uh, so that is manifested uh, by the negative feelings towards human rights, uh, European values. Uh, so now they reached the pinnacle. In 2003 they went up uh, uh, to the top level, so the, the peak, the spike uh, was. And now just they're back to, uh, uh, to the top level as well. And uh, so we did not, uh, we did not uh, poll people now, but if we do that now, I think that the, the, the spike even will go higher. Uh, so uh, so bes besides the discreditation of the elections uh, uh, and the discreditation uh, of the elections, so the elections were discredit discredited uh, because they are not uh, honest, they're falsified, they're not transparent. The elections are. It's how they people deem them. Deem them. So uh, uh, simultaneously, there's a, there is a, this process of uh, of of tension, and uh, so people uh, regard the power critically, and uh, so they are indignant about power activities, and they they uh, they are. Uh, irritated uh, by the activity. So then the corruption scandals, uh, so the population, over almost every week uh, uh, in, uh, in the media public hates, uh, publishes uh, so yet another material concerning uh, uh, corruption scandals uh, in the top echelons of power. And, uh, and uh, so that, that, is, uh, uh, that adds to it, uh, compounds it. And uh, so people just every and every day, every day of their lives, so ordinary people, uh, rank and file, so they run into the brick wall of uh, uh, so the uh, improper functioning of the judicial system and uh, uh, red tape, bureaucracy, and, and, and the judicial system just, uh, is, is regarded as, uh, as an institution that protects the interests of oligarchs and, uh, and those who hold power. That, that's how uh, the, uh, uh, the the legal system is, is perceived, and uh, so you can see that there is a the the, pop in the population. Uh, uh, so they feel more and more vulnerable. Uh, they feel that they are not protected, uh, and uh, as a result, uh, so they want to make up for it. Uh, th this feeling, th this feeling of vulnerability, and this feeling of uncertainty. And this feeling of uh, of, uh, uh, of 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 the of the fact that they are off balance, so that they are not uh, a full human beings. It's very important because the growth of Russian nationalism uh, is the is the consequence uh, consequence of uh, of the trauma 
of the trauma that the Russians suffered after the collapse of the Soviet Union, so when they felt themselves part of the great power that made up uh, for uh, the weakness uh, of your own personal position, your own vulnerability. And uh, so it gave a certain status and sense and meaning to a private existence of a person. And that disappeared. And, uh, and uh, certainly uh, wearing away this trauma uh, and uh, 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 so gave, gave uh, this uh, feeling. So that resulted in this uh, uh, so feeling of indignation and, and, uh, and uh, uh, irritation towards the, the United States as uh, our biggest uh, uh, rival. And uh, so the first signs of xenophobia that we uh, actually started to report in the, in the 90s already, but uh, so xenophobia is, is on the rise um, uh, uh, since that time. And uh, uh, so then uh, the vulnerability, the lack of protection uh, uh, on a personal plane uh, certainly requires compensation, uh, uh, requires uh, so the person should try, try to still feel good about himself, he prove himself. And this uh, xenophobia feelings, uh, uh, so they always uh, hand, they went hand in hand so to go to give priority of the Russians uh, to protect the Russians against the immigrants, against the illegal workers. Uh, and uh, so those demands were uh, running high. And then, and then they wanted this, this demand for this symbolic compensation of the losses. But if we go back to the general issues, uh, but what is... Uh, hmm. And so what is nationalism? If we try, if we try to interpret, uh, uh, define it, uh, uh, so nationalism uh, to a certain extent uh, is a system uh, of, uh, uh, of something that uh, uh, integrates the society horizontally, uh, so that unites nationalism, uh, so the entire mass of the population on the basis uh, on the basis of uh, the belief uh, uh, a belief in the unity of culture, territory, uh, integrity of uh, the past history. So certainly, more or less, it's a set of myths, uh, symbolic uh, historic events uh, that were at, at the foundation. But it's very important for every nation to have this this condition and. And uh, so, but in, in a state of a crisis uh, or disorganization, uh, 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 so these so mechanisms that integrate the society, uh, uh, put it together, are very important. Mm. Um, uh, uh, if you look at, the, at, at what has been happening in, in the last 25 years after the collapse of the Soviet Union, we can speak about two types of nationalism uh, in general uh, form. The uh, first is emancipatory nationalism, uh, which is characteristic of uh, the uh, republics of the former USSR republics, and, uh, 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 so initiated uh, uh, by the national elites. And, uh, and uh, this is the, uh, the nationalism, uh, per se, could be national democratic nationalism or just emancipatory nationalism. Uh, we can refer to it as such. Uh, so, but it appealed to the values uh, uh, which uh, uh, emancipated, uh, free the people, the nation, uh, uh, from uh, the external dependence. Uh, um, and uh, what's important that they're coming out with a set of uh, programs, uh, goals, objectives of political development uh, of their own country of their own country. Uh, very often it, uh, it uh, more often not, it is related to the fact of the, uh, uh, so the, uh, the independence, uh, law and order, uh, so human rights society, like what we see in Ukraine. So for example, the uprising against the corrupted, or the corrupt regime of Yanukovych, it was motivated so by this, uh, uh, so law, law and order, not only integration of Ukraine uh, to European Union, not only that reason, but certainly they wanted to build a completely different state that was not based and steeped in corruption and venality. Uh, and uh, so this is, this is characteristic of the emancipatory, freeing national democratic movement. Uh, so then another type of nationalism uh, 
Putin, uh, which is uh, uh, which is characteristic for by the Russian nationalism, is uh, the uh, uh, protective compensatory nationalism, compensatory protective. Usually, it's an ideological uh, 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 movement of symbols, uh, ideas, and they do not set any any new goals of development, and it's not related in any way uh, uh, to new programs. Uh, uh, so, this kind of nationalism uh, appears as as a result, as a reaction to the frustration, uh, uh, to the fact of the collapse of the great country and the crisis, and acts as a as a psychologically protective. Uh, rationalizing mechanism, compensatory mechanism that, and uh, uh, so generate some compensatory mechanisms uh, that uh, make the person feel good, and and uh, uh, so we do not. So we, what what we say? We are not the West. They say so. Russia is not Europe. Uh, uh, as, uh, so then the concept of the cultural ministry, ministry of culture uh, spoke about that. As, uh, this is as crazy, you know, just to say that we're not Europe anymore. So this ministry of culture made that statement. Uh, and, uh, and then, but we can see, so this turnaround uh, in the public opinion that occurred uh, this year. And so while in the beginning of the 90s, uh, after uh, perestroika, uh, uh, so we had no doubt that Russia is part and parcel of Europe, um, and uh, so that we are guided by the same values, and there is no other way. Uh, so you remember all those slogans, so there no, nothing else is there, and uh, so it was just an obvious, uh, only possible moment at that time. So now, today, so the state so they impose uh, uh, and accept by the, uh, accepted by the public opinion that Russia is not Europe. They have, uh, uh, we have our own unique way. No one knows, uh, have the faintest idea what kind of way that is, and it makes no sense to ask so, because it's an empty, empty uh, uh, perception. Because they kind of, because there is a process of pushing away rather than just confirming, absorbing. Uh, and uh, uh, so Russia is unique, it's so spiritual, it's so uh, high principled, and uh, people are not concerned with material issues, uh, they think about spiritual, and, uh, so that uh, so human, uh, spiritual, whatever they mean by, by, by us being spiritual, so we have a unique uh, traditions. Uh, what kind of traditions, we have no idea, but we have unique traditions. And, uh, and then a very important is always to strike this barrier, so that's where the, uh, uh, that, that us being different from them. And this is a very important point. And um, And uh, so then in this, uh, in this uh, uh, foggy, smoky, murky, opaque, uh, 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 so uh, 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 event. Uh, so that uh, of Russian nationalism, there are many important factors that get together, just merge together, just against this. So first, there's a trauma from the collapse of the Soviet Union, and, uh, and uh, so people are still co compensatory uh, uh, nature for a private human being. Uh, so and so then uh, the deep disenchantment uh, with the power, with the authorities, and the crisis of the power and authorities, and the guy related to corruption, to venality. And uh, so that's the second point. And then disenchantment, disappointment of uh, 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 that they, 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 they did not see uh, the paternalistic expectations uh, uh, realized. Uh, paternalistic. Because the majority of the population, they treat the power as, as someone, a big, big father that could, uh, should provide, must provide uh, jobs. Uh, uh, so that the, the basic uh, things, uh, medical care, education, uh, infrastructure, so they always look up to the power to, to, to provide that. But so like we can see that certainly the social, uh, social spendings uh, certainly are going down, and that certainly g generates a great deal of discontent among the population. And uh, so that's why this, this paternalistic uh, convention, so this covenant uh, between, uh, between the power and the people uh, uh, in, the, in the conditions of the authoritarian regime, so that the, the, the power just takes care of the people, looks after the people, and the people in response don't get involved in politics. And then uh, after these demonstrations in 2011, 2010, so this, co this uh, covenant started to uh, disintegrate, and they generated different feelings over that end. 
and uh, uh, hopelessness. <coughs> and then um, the, the third point is the disappearance of, uh, of uh, politics as a way to, uh, uh, to display uh, one's, uh, to state uh, one's interests uh, in a public uh, field <laughs> and uh, to generate some uh, coherent programs of the national development, the inability to do that. Another important point, uh, uh, sociologically, uh, uh, so the, the carers uh, uh, or introducers of nationalism changed. Uh, so while at the beginning of the 90s, uh, so the main uh, carers of nationalistic xenophobic ideas uh, uh, were the lower uh, classes, the less educated, uh, uh, elderly people, they were the actual, uh, so the peripheral groups, uh, so the lesser breeds, uh, so to say, of uh, the old culture, so they were the carers of those ideas. And uh, uh, then, uh, let me just digress a little bit, uh, you can... Uh, mm. Uh, the, 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 so this is this is the way. Uh, so the Russians uh, uh, look at the United States. Uh, so that's how they treat. Uh, so you see that the negative feelings uh, to the U.S. is, is going down. Uh, so this is the, the, this uh, this curve shows the difference between positive and negative feelings to the U.S. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the spikes that we see here mark the uh, uh, ongoing uh, propaganda campaigns. And the first uh, had to do with Primakov's uh, campaign and response to uh, Serbia bombing in NATO as the first wave of anti-American mood. The second is the Gulf War, the, uh, start in Iraq. And uh, the third is the Russian-Georgian War, uh, the deepest uh, spike of the anti-American, anti-U.S. Uh, uh, feelings, because the war was uh, uh, portrayed not so much between the Sashkashvili and Russian uh, regimes uh, as a conflict between Russia and the United States, uh, trying to push out uh, the r r Russia of the traditional conventional zones of influence and uh, picturing Russia as a not a global but a regional uh, power controlling all the processes in the post-Soviet state. And the current peak is the response to the events in Ukraine and uh, again uh, the uh, serving uh, of the information in the mass media as inspired by the West, cooked and concocted by the, by the U.S. Uh, special uh, forces. And uh, we see the same attitude to the European Union, though um, the perception about Europe is much less acute and painful than uh, the one to the U.S. And primarily because the European Union is not uh, uh, perceived as uh, a, an empire or a military uh, conglomerate. And I started talking about uh, the change in the composition of social groups that introduce this xenophobia. And uh, once in the early 90s, these were the peripheral routine groups, uh, keepers of so-called uh, conventional cultural perceptions. Today, primarily, the um, uh, conductors of this uh, xenophobic nationalism are the most educated groups, officials, state officials primarily, more educated, learned people, people with higher education, and large cities with Moscow leading and uh, providing the top level of uh, such uh, uh, response. Fantastic uh, uh, switch. And uh, in Moscow, 74% feel negative irritation, fear mm, uh, to, to, uh, in this respect. 
and it is uh, the uh, authorities, the experts, the educated people, bureaucracy, red tape, officials generate and orchestrates such uh, perceptions and uh, feelings that <coughs> integrate the community. Exactly the negative identification through opposition, through the image of an alien uh, with animosity becomes the basis of integration, the glue that um, unites the whole community. This is another manifestation of positive uh, targets and programs of national development. So uh, going away from ideas of uh, modernization of the country development and preserving the existing status quo through the growth of uh, negativism and uh, um, solidifying this uh, animosity factor to others. And uh, we see different slogans here and uh, uh, with on all the cross sections we see the most educated and uh, active groups of uh, officials, bureaucracy as well as more, uh, uh, I would say, what we call in Russia intelligence, so the, the educated people, which never happened before. And uh, <coughs> I will jump over. It is uh, very important, this xenophobia the domestic and uh, external uh, goes hand in hand with a feeling of uh, um, helplessness, uh, the feeling that uh, you are socially and politically incomplete and cannot influence any decisions. People uh, both answer at our polls that they ha are in no position to influence the authorities' decision both at the federal and even regional level, even the level of uh, their own town. And the most interesting thing is that they don't even want to, because they consider it dangerous, uncomfortable, useless, uh, futile. So this helplessness, the, the feeling of uh, smallness and helplessness has to do with this factor of irritation and internal uh, aggressive feelings that uh, uh, then pours back on others. And uh, the uh, dwindling population, uh, po po popularity that we have seen over the last four years since the moment of the Russian-Georgian war to this January, to the last January, gives us very sharp boost of support of the present uh, authority. So the process of uh, the authority's legitimation that we observed previously has not just been suspended, but uh, reversed. And the crisis of the authorities of the, after the Ukrainian events um, uh, has stopped. And uh, we see, we observe the absolutely new phase of the uh, state of society. And uh, speaking about the social uh, strata, so let me say a couple of words about the ideological background. Special research that we made, a survey with a Pine group, uh, Professor Pine, the professor of High School of Economics and Center of uh, Public Opinion Study, 
who was specifically targeting the nationalistic trends in the internet and the mass media, trying to analyze them, we were trying to overturn their conclusions after the polls and trying to look how those ideas that they have noticed well are distributed among the population and we managed within this activity we managed to come to interesting conclusions firstly those the groups who are loyal to the authorities or support them to a lesser extent have these uh, nationalistic and xenophobic uh, ideas in this in this respect nationalism um, has the anti-regime nature so this is kind of criticism uh, shifted to the well uh, uh, to the motto that we cannot criticize the authorities so we should definitely turn our rage against uh, the weak or the aliens all this russian nationalism the most pronounced russian nationalism <coughs> has this critical nature towards the present authorities and uh, very with very different uh, explanations and we can uh, highlight four main reasons for that first is uh, russian national democratic meaning it's not the uh, uh, empire but building a russian democratic national state like other uh, nations that seems today after the Crimean events very um, uh, 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 very much improbable but it is important and this trend is ongoing though not very well pronounced rather national uh, liberal uh, trend the other is uh, national leftism so joining the slogans the left slogans very diverse uh, from a, a anarchy to uh, to marxism and uh, merging with russian national nationalism criticizing along with the uh, some protection of russian purely russian values they also come up with the idea of fairness, fair treatment, which is very important. Uh, so, uh, 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 distribu uh, state distribution, control, and in a way, revival of the Soviet system, <coughs> rebirth of the Soviet uh, state system, but with uh, national values and uh, priorities of Russian interests. Third, and the most uh, noticeable, is racial nationalism, which is which boils down to Nazi Nazism with strong biological um, uh, 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 background to blood, soil, purity of Russian blood and uh, the demand of uh, very rigid uh, ethnic segregation. And the fourth is uh, less pronounced, uh, like imperial or high-powered uh, nationalism, conservative in nature, uh, much less pronounced. But uh, all those uh, uh, ideas uh, overlap, merge, and uh, in reality we see configurations, uh, different configurations and uh, combinations of them, like uh, this ethnic uh, nazism, 
combined with imperial nationalism almost never it will go along with the national liberalism but with others it can it can do with others and this is exactly uh, how we see the mapping of this uh, ideological uh, um, uh, uh, background in conclusion what is there to say in general this uh, 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 ra uh, a price of Russian nationalism is a symptom of cultural and moral crisis of the Russian society is a symptom of a um, absence of ideas and uh, uh, prospects of development of uh, cultural and uh, social weaknesses of uh, uh, elite and uh, prominent people who are unable to come up with new values and uh, the whole set of stereotypes and uh, the form, the frames is archaic. Myths and uh, uh, reflections of the pre-Soviet times but mm, morphing into some uh, new um, expressions, just expressed in a new, in a modern way. I believe this is, that we should be concerned, this is a very alarming sign, not just traditionalization of the Russian society, but the threat of degradation, the dead end, the standstill. And that's where I would like to stop and uh, willing to take your questions. Good morning. There's no doubt that we shall have questions. So Mr. Oreshkin would be the first uh, to ask. Uh, thank you, Kirill Oreshkin from St. Petersburg, 2008 graduate. Uh, so we uh, do pre-election soci sociology and uh, study of this economic uh, position of the population with the mostly uh, qualitative uh, methods like focus groups and over the last few years we can also we we have observed we have been observing a sharp growth of nationalistic and xenophobian uh, um, uh, feelings among the population as Lev Dmitrievich said we can really confirm that the educational uh, and age groups of people who are uh, prone to xenoph xenophobian uh, feelings yes indeed we we confirm the data uh, are, is the same it's not any uh, aged people anymore, uh, people of uh, some 40 years with higher university education. And uh, what I wanted uh, to add as focus groups allow us both highlight uh, the age and education uh, properties of the uh, strata, but ask questions, what's behind it? Why? What's the reason? Uh, so. Especially, I would like uh, to uh, tell that most of the people who feel negative to, for instance, uh, the people from the Caucasus, the Middle Asia, and uh, so when you ask them if you have faced any uh, manifestations of animosity or negative treatment by those uh, 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 migrants. Uh, most of them said, no, personally, I have not, but everybody knows. Or I saw on TV, I read in the web, or my friend told me about this. So people have no personal experience of negative interaction with those uh, uh, people from other ethnic groups. And I think this is influenced by the mass media and general uh, m m mood, perception in the society. So I guess that's my comment, no question. Would you like to comment? 
If not, we can just uh, switch to the next question. Yes, we go further. Yes, uh, please. I, Dmitry Kalagin, Voronezh, 2009. I wanted to ask you, uh, this chart you were showing, one of the charts, about this positive response to the to foreigners and migrants. I saw the group named Army, the Army. So what's the phenomenon uh, with the highest positive response? A microphone, uh huh, mic. Yep. Well, these are not just uh, the army and military people, but the police, the policemen. You know, the police of the higher status, not just uh, the ordinary road uh, traffic cops, uh, so the, the, not the cops on the beat. So this group is not uh, very extensive, not numerous, so I would be careful about uh, those numbers, but it's important um, that it's not just uh, the uh, uniformed people. We. We are not uh, covering the army. These are only the uh, people who reside, who live in the city. But as for the prisons or, uh, 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 or the uh, army camps are outside of our scope. These are those who, who, uh, whom we meet among the population. And as a rule, they, these are the most educated army people and <coughs> uh, people with legal uh, uh, legal education, uh, uh, like investigators and the police, uh, and as strange as it may seem, they uh, use uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, legal thinking, compliance, and are not prone to demonstrating some aggressive uh, uh, inclinations. So, so probably it was just for demonstration, but that's what they showed. Mr. Zelnikov, Kaluga, 2004. As a scientist, as a scholar, you made a very serious effort with your colleagues, and uh, you have uh, uh, portrayed to us the growth of Russian nationalism, not as an unbiased uh, scholar, but as, a, as an expert, but as your personal view on the growth of Russian national. If you believe that this is a negative um, uh, thing. What uh, would you advise to the president? Uh, uh, does he seek your advice? And if yes, what would you do to counsel him? Uh, well, he never. No, I never counseled any administration or president or whoever. I never interacted. We get no calls. We don't call. Though I know that that. Uh, they pay attention to our data, and they do analyze and uh, treat it. Uh, they, 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 they take them close to heart. <coughs> what would I tell the president if I could? Hardly. He would hardly listen or open his uh, ears to me. But. I would say that the policy that he is pursuing uh, actually leads to national catastrophe, national disaster, especially with respect to Ukraine, the growth of isolation, detachment uh, and uh, of Russia, military expenditures and uh, cutting the uh, human capital uh, spendings. Uh, so to make it more clear, the army, uh, the the uh, uh, budget allowed to the army, to the enforcement agencies, today 2.7 times exceed all other <coughs> uh, ex uh, uh, spendings on uh, health care, education, uh, cumulative spendings. This is by itself is a symptom, a sign of uh, uh, mobilization military society. 
And uh, as you understand, in a little while it will turn into a r r strongest uh, degradation of uh, human capital and reduction. It, it will not go unnoticed, it will not go uh, painless. So giving uh, specific advice about the Russian nationalism, when in his own speeches we hear very strong nationalist uh, statements, would be quite strange. More? More? More questions? Yes, Mr. Kabanov. Another high-ranking official with us here, Mr. Kabanov. Mr. Gutkov, um, uh, Andrei Kabanov, I am uh, alumnus of 2012, um, deputy chairman of the government of Ivanova region. The uh, question of uh, international or um, um, inter-ethnic uh, relations is within the ambit of my office. Um, I have been following uh, a most unusual phenomenon um, whereby the Russian nationalism and the Russian Orthodox Church have uh, some specific uh, features. Well, first of all, um, the Russians uh, are not uh, trying uh, to preserve uh, their um, traditional uh, cultural uh, identity, um, uh, such as uh, the peoples of the Northern uh, Caucasus are. In uh, what I mean to say is that uh, the so-called uh, Russian nationalists uh, are not willing uh, to be wearing the peasants' garments of the 17th uh, uh, century uh, to use the samovars. Uh, to drink tea or else uh, to play balalaikas as the only musical instrument. Uh, in this sense, um, uh, w with that said, uh, most, uh, the majority of, uh, of the so-called Russian nationalists are proponents of the restoration of uh, the Soviet glory or the long-lost Soviet uh, glory that may have never, in fact, uh, um, existed. Uh, so uh, the Russians, uh, the Russian nationalists are um, um, uh, establishing uh, themselves as the proponents of the Soviet uh, um, uh, Union, and this is a this seems to be a dilemma or a dichotomy that I would like you to comment on. Well, I I I, I agree with you. Uh, that uh, the traditional Russian culture um, uh, is uh, irrelevant uh, with respect uh, uh, to, to uh, the question that you have mentioned. Uh, the traditions uh, were indeed um, destroyed uh, throughout the 20th century and spe specifically through the dec throughout the, the decades of the Soviet um, rule. Um, uh, during uh, collectivization, uh, the image of the Russian peasantry as it existed in the 19th century um, was uh, um, irredeemably lost, um, uh, as well as uh, throughout the urbanization. So we are dealing with some uh, myths about the Russian uh, traditions, uh, some sort of a uh, artificial marble, an imitation antique, and that's an important point. Um, this uh, such an appeal to these phantom-like uh, images, uh, which are primarily understood uh, as uh, as an ideology uh, of. Uh, of the imperial, uh, there are some vestiges of um, of the of the Soviet uh, um, Empire, as you rightly said. Uh, so there's there's a lot of mythology about that, uh, and uh, what is really understood as uh, something uh, purely Russian. Um, uh, uh, Matryoshka doll. Uh, as a symbol of the Russian traditional culture is uh, something that was uh, uh, imported into Russia after the Russo-Japanese War, and it comes from the Japanese uh, doll, um, Goko Daruma, and uh, uh, the manufacturing um, um, the, the, the Matryoshka dolls uh, were uh, uh, generated by uh, by uh, you know at at this at this uh, juncture in time, the same pertains to a number of other artifacts. Um, 
and uh, the dramatic processes um, of the Russian history in the 20th century, the totalitarian regime and the dismantling of the traditional lifestyle of the Russian of the Russian peasants, the Russian village. Um, in this sense, uh, indeed, uh, um, all um, parochial traditions had been uh, lost. So we are dealing with a highly eclectic, uh, artificial um, uh, sort of uh, uh, ideology here, um, an agglomeration uh, of, the, of these uh, of these myths um, is uh, intended to, to legitimize uh, the current regime, the current government, uh, and uh, the government is missing um, such ideology and is uh, uh, is trying to fill in this um, this gap. With respect uh, to the nationalists, um, uh, not all nationalists have uh, uh, have um, nostalgia for the Soviet times. Um, no. There is uh, the so-called um, uh, current within this movement uh, of uh, the Russian liberal Democrats uh, who would like to build a Russian uh, a state based on the rule of law. Uh, these people um, are highly critical of the Soviet past. Uh, they uh, believe that this is uh, that this was a, uh, um, a very harmful um, regime, an idea, uh, indeed a criminal regime, and they would like uh, to build uh, um, a civil state, uh, but uh, remaining uh, within the bounds of the Russian uh, nation nationalism. Uh, and so um, uh, there is this current. Um, Not uh, all of uh, that said. Not all of the nationalists um, are, uh, feel this uh, sickness, uh, Soviet sickness, or nostalgia for the Soviet times. But 52 percent of uh, of uh, of those, um, or up until 60 percent. Uh, um, but the majority uh, understand that uh, uh, that um, it is impossible to return uh, to the Soviet past. Uh, an appeal to the Soviet uh, Union, to the Soviet past, is not rather an orienteer for uh, the future development, uh, but rather um, a premise uh, or a, or a basis for the critique of the current state of, uh, of affairs, um, insofar as the uh, free health uh, care or free education are believed or or proposed uh, as uh, um, as exemplary mm, uh, social uh, dimensions uh, of the Soviet uh, rule, such uh, idealized the Soviet past is uh, then proposed um, as the basis uh, for such uh, critique. Uh, with respect to current um, uh, national politics in uh, Russia, um, I think it is highly contradictory and uh, and very dangerous. Um, if uh, Mr. Putin as uh, as has been recently said um, uh, proposes uh, to build uh, the state of the Russians then indeed what is to be done to other ethnic groups uh, microphone he never said that uh, well no I think uh, the, the the meaning was that uh, uh, Daria, I, I'm sorry. Uh, if you could please reserve uh, this uh, for discussion, um, for your question. The problem will uh, will uh, uh, arise uh, from trying uh, to uh, combine uh, this um, uh, Russian uh, national idea with an idea of a multi-ethnic and a multi-denominational state. So th th this will be a big problem. Inasmuch as uh, the idea of uh, creating a statehood on the basis of uh, returning or reverting to the Russian traditions and uh, 
uh, etatization uh, or rendering of an uh, um, state um, uh, uh, nature to the Russian Orthodox Church also creates um, s uh, important problems uh, for the future. Mr. Zubairuev, um, Dagestan, uh, alumnus of 2005. Thank you. Mr. Gudkov, uh, you have uh, touched upon a very sensitive subject. Uh, the national politics in this country have been based uh, on uh, on the assumption that the government is trying uh, to establish peace between uh, ethnic groups and uh, nations and uh, and religions. Um, and uh, many of these efforts are in vain because uh, um, one would have thought that it is prudent to or it would be correct to establish uh, peace between uh, the citizens of pe or people of different religions and of different uh, ethnic groups. Uh, so um, much of this work is um, is in vain um, because the individual nature is uh, 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 not in focus. Um, and uh, uh, does, do, does, do your studies um, allowed to make a conclusion uh, that uh, the educated people uh, that the educated people in Russia uh, have uh, started uh, um, uh, to uh, to be looking for reasons um, or finding the cause of their problems uh, with uh, with other ethnic groups. In other words, uh, does your research suggest uh, that there was a watershed when um, when uh, a significant proportion of the Russians um, of uh, educated and cultured Russians have? Uh, uh, have uh, started to seek causes of their ills uh, in uh, the multi-ethnic nature of the state. Um, it is no secret that uh, that the psychological uh, state uh, of the Russian nation is uh, of high importance, uh, not only for Mr. for the likes of Mr. Zhirinovsky. Um, and I think that uh, the psychological state of the Russian citizens w would be something that I could understand. Whereas uh, the when when we're talking about the psychological state of the Russians uh, uh, ethnically, uh, I think that we are indeed uh, uh, creating uh, a, a problem. Um, and uh, one other question: Are your studies in any way uh, used by any of the state institutions or the the government? Well, our studies are primarily re uh, addressed to the society, not to the government. Uh, our studies uh, are indeed uh, a measurement tool, which is uh, publicly available to all users, um, including the government. Uh, that the government is uh, following um, uh, our studies, I, we are aware of that, uh, and I have uh, mentioned that a number of times. Um, those uh, tendencies, those trends, um, um, And uh, in a number of cases, uh, we have been accused of uh, propaganda or anti-government uh, propaganda, uh, or even dissenting uh, um, uh, activities. Um, but in any way, I know for a fact uh, that uh, that the Kremlin uh, does pay attention uh, to to what we do and to the results of our polls. But uh, the attitude uh, towards uh, our data um, is uh, 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 very contradictory. Now, we, we have never had any orders uh, from the government. Um, we are, are conducting this research uh, at uh, at um, our own expense uh, by um, now, 
When did the actual uh, growth of such sentiments, national sentiments, start? I can say this with a certain degree of um, accuracy. Uh, um, we started these studies in 1988. Towards the end of 1980s, um, the level of xenophobia in Russia was at its lowest. It was probably twice as low as in uh, elsewhere in Europe and certainly lower than in other um, ex-USSR republics, which was uh, partially related to the fact that the national problems uh, or the inter-ethnic problems were not uh, um, mm, emphasized in the public discourse, uh, and on the other hand, uh, uh, there was this uh, um, uh, moment or point of um, imperial um, mentality, and uh, the Russians uh, felt quite as safe about uh, about what their country is. It was uh, believed by the absolute majority to be their country. Uh, um, and there was no uh, need uh, to self-assert uh, the role or the, to, to assert the role of the Russians. In addition, it is uh, uh, just as important uh, that uh, there was a general feeling of the historical uh, deadlock uh, that this country arrived at. Uh, and. Uh, I have spoken about this um, uh, at other, uh, for other audiences. Uh, uh, the end of the 1980s and the beginning of the 1990s in this country was marked by this uh, almost masochistic um, feeling of the historical impasse, the historical deadlock. We are the nations of slaves. We are an example of how people must not live. We are the upper volta with nuclear weapons. The entire history of the Soviet history is the history of uh, crime, sufferings, uh, and uh, and. Uh, um, uh, and uh, poverty. Uh, and these are quotations uh, from some of the um, publications of, those, of this era. Uh, this was indeed uh, 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 quite a, uh, up to 57 percent of the respondents uh, between 1989 to 1991 uh, could say things like that in, uh, in answering the questions about the, the Soviet past. Um, so I was showing this uh, little picture. Um, only 13% of uh, the respondents in 1989 said that Russia has enemies. Naming the, these as Islamists, uh, communists, uh, the CIA, the West. So, but all of this was only 13% of those who were asked, uh, 47 to 48%. Um, and then, uh, or even up to 52%. Uh, uh, said, uh, why should we be seeking enemies when our problems are uh, those of our own making? So this uh, this consciousness, uh, this feeling of the historical deadlock was quenching uh, the aggression f f from uh, possible aggression. From mid-1990s, when the reforms uh, started uh, and uh, and uh, the, uh, the uh, those who were to be blamed uh, for the economic downturn um, to, were to be to be sorted. Uh, we are for the first time seeing uh, this growth of xenophobia, which uh, reached its first peak, or indeed um, became to be noticed uh, by uh, the end of the 1990s. Um, from about uh, from around this time, we are seeing. Uh, um, an acute uh, reaction um, on uh, an attempt to, to uh, stand uh, the, the ground. Uh, these are, of course, phantom um, threats um, uh, caused by vulnerability, the economic hardships, uh, and you're right. Uh, uh, 
uh, I think it was you who said that, sir. Yes, uh, you said it, that on in terms of uh, of um, everyday life, uh, xenophobia is not widely present in Russia. Uh, only 12 to 13 percent. Uh, um, of uh, those uh, would be um, uh, w would respond that they had ever come across um, manifestations of uh, of uh, um, xenophobia. Uh, so, in many ways, this is a projection of people's own mm, uh, feeling of insecurity and complexes. Mm. Boris Krasovsky. Uh, good morning, uh, Mr. Gutkov. Uh, if I may uh, ask a question, um, there is this um, concept of Russian nationalism. On the other hand, what do you mean the classical Russian nationalism? Is that the nationalism of the Black Hundred or the nationalism of, uh, of Purishkevich? Uh, well, uh, an attempt uh, to go back to the pre-Christian times. Oh, mm -hmm. the Russian paganism. But then there is this uh, Russian um, Imperial nationalism, but the Russian imperial nationalism uh, should uh, not uh, uh, be mixed uh, with the uh, mm, hate uh, for for the ethnic minorities, uh, because uh, because the, the ethnic minorities are um, a part of the empire. Then, of course, there is this uh, notion of the Soviet internationalism um, and the unifying role. Um, of uh, of Russia as uh, the successor of the Soviet uh, of the Soviet state, it is difficult to, to weigh uh, these uh, tendencies. But uh, do you believe? Um, what do you think will be uh, the correlation between these uh, orient um, orienteers, uh, that of the uh, classical Russian nationalism or Russian ethnic nationalism, Russian imperial nationalism, and the Soviet internationalism? Do you believe that there would be uh, there would be a, um, a prevalence of any of these uh, trends? What would be the future interaction between uh, these uh, trends, these three trends? Uh, I think that Uh, the imperial uh, Russian nationalism, as you um, termed it, will continue to grow. And uh, the Russian uh, racism or the Russian uh, Nazism will also continue to grow. Uh, these uh, two um, branches um, are indeed of uh, highest potential according to the polls. The worse is the uh, situation within the country, the more uh, um, the more the, the higher surge we will see um, in terms of these uh, trends. Um, these are of course uh, crossing each other and uh, it would only be possible to uh, divide these um, into some types. Um, you have to realize that there's a lot of common ground between these uh, tendencies, trends which come and cross and uh, and uh, even have uh, some inbreeds and hybrids. Uh, I think that uh, uh, this uh, national, um, um, the idea of a uh, civil um, uh, national state will uh, hopefully prevail. 
uh, and I think this is uh, the least uh, uh, the least uh, dangerous of the three. Uh, Lena, uh, Lena has a has a word. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gutkov. Well, I'm awful. I'm I'm very often uh, um, taking uh, all uh, that my uh, my optimism uh, from um, from Zubairo. Um, I can imagine how much uh, while you're making this presentation in Moscow, uh, one can only imagine how much more difficult uh, the situation might be in the ethnic um, uh, regions of Russia. Uh, let me uh, reiterate uh, this uh, quotation from uh, Seneca, the Stoic, the Stoic uh, philosopher, that even after the poor harvest, one has to uh, plant the seeds, one has to sow. Uh, uh, let me ask. Let me uh, uh, let me read uh, from the address of President Putin uh, in uh, April of 2005, uh, nine years ago. But one has to understand that uh, he wrote uh, a congratulation um, to our school uh, on the 10th uh, anniversary, thanking us for the civil, civil uh, for our civil um, activities. But let us let us read. Uh, Russia has been is and will continue um, to be a major European country, a major European nation. Uh, a, a country that has gone uh, and uh, conquered its rights uh, to the European ideals of um, justice and democracy. These uh, ideals have been uh, determining uh, for our society for centuries. So he continues um, uh, developing um, this uh, this uh, idea. In uh, 2014, uh, President uh, Putin, uh, the same president is uh, talking to the Federal Assembly uh, with a um, request to allow him uh, to um, uh, to uh, lead the army into the Ukraine. Uh, from the time of Mr. Levada, uh, the late Mr. Levada, uh, where, where is the Soviet intellect? Uh, after the Soviet uh, Union is gone. And I think that what we have heard uh, from the president uh, down to to many people in uh, in uh, Russia uh, shows that the Soviet uh, uh, Homo Sovieticus, uh, if you will, and the Soviet um, person has not uh, uh, is not is not gone, but has just mutated. Uh, my question is. I can see, sir. The the Russian uh, Russia has always been uh, a country rich in uh, literary tradition um, uh, and uh, rich in science, uh, rich in in the arts. But the legal um, mind, uh, the rule of law, um, has uh, never occupied a particularly uh, large space in the Russian um, public uh, discourse, uh, even though uh, today uh, um, people with uh, a law degree are, are, are leading this country. But indeed, what can be done in terms of this quotation from Seneca, from Seneca, um, what can be done to expand uh, the Russian consciousness uh, towards uh, uh, more uh, lawfulness and the rule of law. Our question uh, is is uh, is uh, 
very sophisticated, uh, very difficult indeed, and um, I don't have uh, an answer to it. Uh, what I can say, however, while I cannot answer your um, your question uh, in uh, in a determined way, I think that we have to understand. If we understand uh, something. And we can find means of change. But for that, uh, we have to diagnose the situation and understand what is going on. The problem of our society is, I think, uh, about uh, the absence of communications between different groups, um, the absence of representations, uh, and uh, an ability that th the law uh if we if we speak about uh, the uh, the laws the law uh, we are dealing uh, with the imposed law uh, the law imposed uh, by the government uh, and uh, and the practice uh, shows uh, um, that it has uh, paradoxical consequences both in the in the field of electoral legislation uh, the and uh, concepts of legitimacy and legality when the laws uh, adopted by the russian duma um, uh, start to be contradicting the russian uh, 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 contradiction um, are, co uh, are contradicting the constitution, such as um, uh, the the law on the foreign agents, um, an even more important process is not about. Uh, it is not sufficient to understand what is happening in the society, but it is important to provide for communication and uh, um, to be building or constructing bridges between the different parts of the society to try and attain um, uh, some sort of a social contract uh, through the society, through a series of, um, of agreements, um, through discussion, through deliberations, through public uh, presentations, uh, the society uh, is either understood as a synonym of the state or else as a synonym of uh, the populace while forgetting that in the classical sociological sense uh, society is uh, a system of uh, relations on the basis of solidarity and common interest of citizens. This is uh, what we see in the basis of the European understanding of Gesellschaft and society. Um, a system uh, of horizontal relations without hierarchy and without uh, subordination. This is what we understand as society. In, and this is indeed a, a very difficult uh, problem to uh, try and shape up uh, a society. So the Enlightenment uh, communication are uh, of, um, of uh, um, such a great um, importance, but uh, censorship is um, is getting established. Um, censorship is um, permeating um, uh, the public life in uh, this country, uh, even without uh, the v court uh, verdict of uh, courts, uh, the information sources can be can be blocked or liquidated. So the forum and the space for public discussions is uh, dramatically shrinking, like uh, the like like the chagrin skin in Balzac's uh, novel. But what what do we face? We will be facing the same things. Nothing new. Colleagues, uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, uh, this time, uh, our, the time of this session is is up. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Gutkov. 
I think that we have to uh, we have to thank um, uh, Lev Gutkov for this um, for this very important session. Thank you. We shall break for 28 minutes.